fresh out the oven. What is cracking, everybody? It's Mega Man here, and welcome to another look at my map video. This time for Pass Gridiron A13. Now, what does that all mean? Well, this is a map for Team Fortress 2. Off the cuff, number one. Number two, this is a map for the game mode Pastime, which is a game mode that is very weird for Team Fortress 2. And number three is that this is A13. This is the version that was submitted for the TF2 maps Rules of Three Minor Contest. I ended up getting eighth place, which is surprisingly not bad considering how much I have disliked this map ever since I originally created it for 14 bits micro contest for roll of threes. TF2 Maps is having this big roll of threes thing. First 14 bit had a micro contest for roll of threes where you had to make a map that had three objectives of some kind. Could be any game mode, could be attack and fend, could be, I don't know, freaking anything you put, capture the flag if you put three flags in a map. I think somebody did that. Um, multiple powerhouse CP push, whatever you want to call that. Uh, and one of the options was, of course, pastime, because there are three objectives with three different goals. The run-in goal, the throw-in goal, and the bonus goal. Now, if you haven't played Pastime in Team Fortress 2, I'm not surprised. A lot of people really don't care for this game mode all of that much. It was originally designed by Bad Robot. Yes, the movie development studio they worked on a game mode for Team Fortress 2. It was weird, and they kind of just abandoned it before they finished it, because Pastime only sort of works in Team Fortress 2. And a lot of the problems I find with it is uh, level-focused. So I thought, okay, I will make a Pastime map, because I've never made a Pastime map before. I've never even thought about messing around with Pastime. I'll make one for the Micro Contest, because it's a very short amount of time, and why not? Just why not? It, it, 14 bits been making a map called Past Gigantic, which is like a sawmill foresty themed map, and I've been playtesting that a little bit, and it's been, it's honestly been kind of fun. And uh, I think somebody named Flurry, I think Flurry is the right name, they're also working on a pastime thing called Small Time, which they're trying to fix a couple of the issues with pastime. And that map has uh, had its enjoyable things as well. And Gridiron is my take on trying to figure out how to make a pastime map by instead of doing what a lot of pastime maps do by being really freaking massive being a lot shorter the idea is the map is shorter more points are scored more often people have more fun what you're looking at right now is you're looking at mid of a13 why am i talking about a13 well that's because every version of this map that has been tested and played has played like butt and I have been very, very unhappy with it. I just didn't want to show it off because I, I hated it. I hated Gridiron for a very, very long time. But uh, I decided I would stick with it till the end of the minor contest because, I don't know, I didn't have to, I didn't want to. I did, stubborn! Let's just put it down to stubbornness. I was stubborn. I decided I would take the map I made for the micro contest all the way through the entirety of the Rule of Three contest for the Micro Contest, the, the Minor Gameplay Contest, and then the Major Detail Contest a couple months from now. I decided I would do that, and I'm stubborn, so I stuck with Gridiron. And this version is the only version that has played decently well. And by that, I mean this is pretty much the only version that hasn't ended with a stalemate from the timer running out because people actually managed to score points, which is kind of important in a game mode about scoring points. I know, it's crazy when you think about it, but it is very true. Anyway, let's take a look at Gridiron, shall we? So... Like I said before, this map is relatively short. It does use sort of a Brickyard-ish style, but uh, more in the Foundry theme, CP Foundry theme, obviously with the big foundries there in the middle, the whole thing being based in, a, in, in like an Ironworks Foundry thing. The idea is that Gridiron is a play on words. A Gridiron is a nickname for a football field, pastime, is somewhat like football or uh, rugby, but with guns. Um, so you have a map called Gridiron, and it's set at a foundry, so you have, like, Grid Ironworks. Play on words here. I'm clever, aren't I? Sometimes. Too much. Too clever for my own good. 
to be honest. It's too clever for my own good, mainly because I've had that idea of making a pastime out called Gridiron in the back of my head for a while, and I just finally decided to do it. And uh, <laughs> it's, it's been an adventure. It's been an adventure. But anyway, uh, yeah, the map is Brickyardy in the way that it's broken up with different lobbies. Brickyard is probably the worst pastime map in Team Fortress 2. The best one might be District Timbertown is a bit of an outlier because it's weird. It's really long. The points, the, the, the goals are spread out all over the place. I don't know. I don't, I don't really like Timbertown. Some people really do in, enjoy that compared to others. I don't, I don't like it at all. I, I think it's kind of butts, but, um, District was okay. Uh, so I kind of, kind of tried to do a hybrid between District and Brickyard with a little bit of gigantic thrown in there, because there, there's, there's not a lot of options when it comes to trying to get inspiration or see how to make a pastime map, but mainly I decided I would make it shorter. So we have the goal area. All three goals are in the same general area, but not the exact same spot. Past District tends to have them all in the exact same spot, which means they are very easy to defend and makes it very difficult for somebody to score points, which is very bad for a game mode where you need to score points. The reason why that is a problem is because an engineer can build up one century and pretty much cover all of the entrances to all of the goals. So I decided that I would spread mine out widthwise instead of lengthwise. Once I finally thought of the word, lengthwise is what Timbertown and and uh, and a brickyard do. But I decided I would spread out widthwise, so they're still in the same general area, even though you have to go the farthest for the big run-in goal down here. It's honestly not that much farther than the throw-in goal or the bonus goal. But getting to the, the each each goal, you take different paths. If you're going to the run-in goal, you can take this main open path out here, either going over this bridge, under this bridge, or, I mean, if you want to take the whole roundabout way, you can go through here and all of that this way. You can actually, I specifically, for every version of this map, I specifically tested to make sure that every class from this this point could throw into the goal from, from here. So even if you're playing as a heavy, which is the slowest class in the game, and a class that you really won't see much on pastime because they're so gosh dang slow and take forever to get anywhere, and pastime maps are ridiculously massive. Uh, <laughs> yeah, if you're playing as a heavy, you can go here and chuck it. He does have the farthest throw distance, I believe, of anybody, whereas the Scout is the fastest class, of course, but has the weakest throw distance. Uh, anyway, to get to the bonus goal, you'll have to go up here and hit this ramp in order to be able to throw into the bonus goal. Uh, you might be able to go from here to double jump or triple jump as a Scout. Don't quote me on that. I'm not sure. I don't think you can triple jump when you have the jack in your hand, but I don't know. I know you can't rocket jump, so you're not going to be rocket jump and chuck it in there unless you, somebody throws it to you while you're in the air, which... I don't know if that's a thing, but uh, it could be. It could be. I don't know. I, I haven't played enough. But anyway, it's around the spawn areas. So the forward spawn is here. First, you'll spawn here. When the jack is on your side of the map, you will then spawn over here. So when the jack is on red side of the map, red will spawn back here so they can focus on defending the goals, opposed to when the jack is at mid or on the other side of the map, the jack being the ball, they will spawn here so they can either go this way quickly to get to mid, or they can go out the front here and check out the goal goals if there happen to be blue still over here after they just scored a point and they need to be cleared out but in order to get the bonus goal you got to go by these spawn rooms which should make getting the bonus goal more difficult which it's supposed to be it is called the bonus goal for a reason it is worth three points opposed to a normal goal which is one point and you're playing to five so if it's too easy to get the bonus goal, then all it takes is two scores and you win. And that's not great. But uh, this way, it takes either the bonus goal and then two other scores, five normal scores, two scores and then a bonus goal, three scores and a bonus goal, etc. Pick and choose, do whatever you want. You can throw them all together. Um, there is this water spot over here. 
which will actually stop you from breaking your legs when you go off of that ramp, because the ramp will shoot you all the way to there, right in the water. Um, it's odd, though, because water area doesn't necessarily fit the Foundry theme. I looked a lot at CP Foundry and other foundry type maps there's cp foundry there's koth forge also known as koth nerd yard which is what it was called in development which will never not be funny um cp alloy is another foundry type map I'm trying i'm just trying to th I mean, I think maybe koth coal plant is a little bit foundry ish i don't entirely remember off the top of my head but like the main foundry map in tf2 is cp foundry even metal metalworks was made before cp foundry so it's it's got its own stuff going on it doesn't use the same kind of theme even though it's got a similar kind of name but uh yeah anyway water doesn't really fit but i think i was able to kind of get it to fit in as it's sort of like a, a drainage area just a drainage pool or drainage ditch that uh, water from somewhere in the facility drains into. Don't drink it. It's bad. Just really, just don't do it. You'll 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 hate yourself for it. You can't swim in it. You can't get fully submerged in it. It is deep enough that you will be considered quote unquote wet. So it should put out fire, and it should make spies quote unquote wet. So you can see them, and it should make it so that if you're standing in it. With, uh, with, uh, what's that thing called? The Neon Annihilator, a Pyro Neon Annihilator. You should get the bonus grades for it. Um, but, yeah, it's mostly just there to stop you from breaking your, breaking your legs. Most of the maps, most pastime maps, at least official wise, usually have a way to not break your legs when you go off of a jump. District's bonus goal, I don't think it does. I know Timbertown has a lot of them going into little puddles. Brickyard usually has a, 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 a jump pad that leads to a jump pad, so that it, it works that way, or it uses a lot of height variety, so the way that you jump, you don't land fast enough to do damage to yourself, if that's how damage for falling works in TF2. But yeah, um, that's what I did there. Over here, I do have another jump pad. Uh, because I wanted to have another jump pad, because Pastime usually has a lot of jump pads, mainly to make up a lot of distance in a short period of time. I wanted to play around with them. Uh, and a jump pad allows you to do one uh, different kinds of one-way routes without having to have a one-way door. Like, I have this jump pad here, so Blue Team or whoever's here can hit that, jump over this fence, whereas people who are pushing forward can walk up and stand up here. They just kind of jump up and over and move on that way, which I, I, I think is kind of neat. I used the jump pad on Payload Race Rush, and that worked out pretty well. I'm um, just trying to figure out how I want to do a jump pad here. I did have a jump pad at mid. A lot of the main maps, I think all of them, honestly, except for possibly District, have a jump pad that goes across mid with the idea that if the jack drops and you hit the jump pad, you can grab the jack out of the air. I had that for a while. People really didn't like it, so I got rid of it. And I've messed around with the layout of mid quite a lot to find one that worked. The main problem I've had with this map were people getting out of mid. Because I decided to put mid inside of a building, which is not something you normally see in pastime. Pastime usually has everything you need out in the open. Um, I think the only one that's close would be district. But it's that district is three paths. You have the path with the the jack dropping and two side paths that go through a building. But the one with the jack dropping is is technically outside. It's got that gazebo thing over top of it. If you play the map, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, it's the gazebo thing from Koth King that's over top of it. Uh, but the main problem I was having were people were having a really hard time getting out of the mid area because of all of the walls and doors and whatnot. So I had to find a good way to place doors that are wide enough, that are located well enough, and so that people inside don't have too much of a height advantage that you can push out into the lobby area at least and have more fights happening in the lobby to the transitional area. I call this a transitional building like on a cough map. A transitional area here. 
So you have the, the, the goal, the transition, the lobby, and mid is how I like to break this up. Um, but that's the idea. You want fights to be more here, defendable back here, but most fights are going to happen in a general here area. You don't want all of your fights to happen here, because then the Jack never gets out of this building, nobody gets anywhere close to scoring, and all you get is a stalemate when time runs out, and that's not fun for anybody. I'm a little bit worried with ammo on this map, because the, even though this map played pretty well last time I tested it, a big problem were NG's building sentries at mid and completely shutting it down. So I think I'm going to get rid of these mid ammo packs, those big ones there. The small ones might stay, the big ones will go, but I'll have to move this stuff around to make attacking sentries that we build up in this area a little bit easier. I have some of an idea of how to do that, but the main thing will be trying to dissuade or at least give a way to deal with sentries while not ruining what I did to mid to make it play well this time. Other maps, pastime wise, District deals with this problem by having three separate paths. If you build a sentry at mid, you can somebody can take the two building routes right beside it and go right past it, and the sentry will never see it. At Brickyard, you can go over it with jump pads to outrange it, and there's a good amount of cover and whatnot that you can outrange from there. Timbertown, again, you can outrange it if you build in the middle because of how open that map is. Uh, Brick, Brickyard's the same way with how open those maps are. Building sentries really is not a good option because they, won't, they just won't last long. But this map is different because I'm inside, you're in more confined space, and you don't have the separate three routes of district. Building up a sentry at mid, you get the sort of cough thing, where if you can build a sentry and hold it at mid, you own mid. And that is a problem for pastime, at the very least. It's a problem for pretty much all maps, when you think about it. Any map, 5 CP, player destruction, all of it. It's, it, it's a problem. So, I gotta figure that out, but other than that, I'm relatively happy with this. It's similar but very different from the original version of this map. If you want to go back and check the original version before for the micro contest, this building used to go all the way out to here. I've learned a lot about just how the game mode works by messing around with this. And overall, I'm happy that I stuck with it. Uh, that I decided to stay with pastime. I don't know if I'm going to get this map to a point where I can detail it in time for the major Rule of Three contest, but I'm going to try. I have some ideas for the next version, and uh, I will see you then when we get to that. For those of you unaware, this video is on the second channel that I have, the main channel, youtube.com slash PhD is where I do my quote-unquote professional videos, once I put a lot of time and effort into writing a script or, and or doing video editing opposed to these that are very casual me just talking to myself in a room about a map that i made and you can listen if you want and or you can not uh this secondary channel has videos like that the main channel has more professional videos game reviews that kind of a thing so subscribe to either subscribe to neither let me know what you think of the map and i'll talk to you guys later